Hello and welcome back everybody. As you can see, Harkin has a lovely set of armor that we picked out for him from last episode. And we have this checkpoint here that we're going to use to spend a bunch of experience on some attribute points. Do I actually want to... Sp no, we have shelter to max, so I'm fine with leaving the rest of my points. Uh, saving the rest of my experience for attribute points as that comes to us, but we now have some points to spend, and I think strength is a nice option. It'll increase our weight capacity, as well as the damage we do with strength weapons, which definitely we want to be increasing. We start off the episode dealing with this chimera that we dealt with last time, but every time you quit out of the game or go through a loading screen, all the enemies in it sort of respawn, so we're going to have to deal with a little bit of that. Though, only him, since the rest of the area is pretty well clear of any sort of respawned enemies. We're only going to have to deal with the enemies that were going to be spawned here from the first place, so not too bad. And he's going to go for his jump, which means we can get behind and wait for his little tantrum, and then come in with the punish. It's a pretty simple strategy, but it works wonders on these guys since otherwise they're quite the pain to deal with. And I dropped my shield a smidge too early. The thing about those little gremlins is that their uh, slashing attack either hits once before they recoil or hits three times before they recoil. So you kind of have to wait a little bit longer in order to play it perfectly safe, but I'm rather impatient, so I often end up getting caught out if they decide to use their three attack uh, when they're engaging me. It's just a personal problem and it's something that I've got to kind of deal with but at the same time it's not too big of an issue since I can make it work even if I do take a little bit of extra damage since I have shelter. Ooh, There we go. Shelter to fall back on in order to replace some of my health. There we go. These guys are not going to let us go in peace, so we're going to have to just take them out before we engage with this trapper over here. Meanwhile, it's going to be laying down some ranged damage, but I should be able to deal with that just fine. Ooh, get a nice little double kill on its uh, little hellhound minions. Here we go. No, no. He was going to back off for that, which means we had to close the distance before actually committing to that swing. But once we did, it goes down pretty easily, meaning we can come over here it took hundreds and pick of this years up. For me to make it. it took minutes for the Roga to take it away. My crystal of travels, my biggest treasure and biggest loss. It grew so powerful. What journeys might the Rogar seek? What journeys will the Rogar find? A little bit of background on the crafter, and a little bit of info on his angst at the Rogar for stealing his lovely little crystal. We're going to immediately engage these guys from a surprise position, which is going to mean we can take them out quite easily. And our health's a bit low, so we're going to shelter up before we head on. It costs a ton of mana at this point because it is level 3 shelter, but at the same time it also restores a ridiculous amount of health. And because we took down this guy's Tyrant Heart, we can actually kill him without worrying about him coming back to haunt us. Oh, no. As you may have noticed there, I actually canceled out of my wind-up animation when I noticed that he was going to be attacking first. And that's one of the other really important things about the combat system in Lords of the Fallen is you can actually guard in order to cancel out of an attack even after you've triggered it. And while this will cost a ton of stamina because you had to use up all the stamina that you were going to initiate the attack with, it's still much better because it can allow you a little bit of time such as in moments like that to evade the damage rather than being fully committed to the swing. Sort of like, I can cancel this pick attack pretty much whenever by just tapping the block button. And that's going to mean I have a much better chance of evading the account encounter without taking extra damage. Hmm, that's 
kind of annoying. What we're experiencing right now is a little bit of a glitch in the game. It could be a glitch or it could not. I'm, I'm of two minds about it. Uh, but as you can see, we don't actually have access to our full health bar. Not health bar, but mana bar right now. And I think that that has something to do with the fact that we've equipped the greed option. The greed uh, trinket. But at the same time, that's never explicitly stated. And it kind of happens every now and again to some of my characters. So I'm still not certain that it's not a bug, but I actually suspect that it's a consequence of equipping the greed trinket, just because if you actually read it, it has a little bit of an ominous warning there, that those who seek its aid have to be aware of its consequences, which doesn't actually tell you anything about what those consequences are, but it does kind of warn you, like, there might be something a little bit more to this than meets the eye. Either way, we can tag that pressure plate there, and this will open this door for just a moment, long enough for us to dash in and loot the chest, but otherwise, this door is completely impassable. Inside's a bunch of light armor for if we were sissies and wanted to be using light armor, but we're not, so we're just gonna take that and head on with our lives, equip the command shield because we want to have something a little bit hefty in order to properly tango with that tyrant once we get there. But before we do, we actually have this vanguard to deal with. And this is one of the few times that the magic attack of the uh, command shield actually comes in handy. Because it's very low damage. However, it works really nicely at aggroing enemies from range. So it's perfect for this scenario where we want to aggro that uh, vanguard before we actually engage this guy. Otherwise, <laughs> you're kidding me? Otherwise the vanguard comes in to support him mid-fight, which can be very difficult to deal with, especially if you don't have enough damage to kind of one-shot the tyrant, which I most certainly do not at this point. Sadly, I just barely lacked the amount of damage needed to kill the tyrant outright which means we're gonna heal up and we've got this spider in here who is doing horrible things to us luckily we had shelter on so we had both boosted defenses and a bit of regen to deal with that and Tannis, but that could have been very I scary just came across for us an ancient message depicting what might be the most daring creation of the Rogar. Bigger than all the lords, it has an odd number of limbs. And its twisted flesh is mixed with weapons. And it said something about immunity or healing. Well, that's our little preview of the next boss coming up, so enjoy that while we're here. And in here, we actually pick up the griffin chest piece, which is incredibly good. We've also... Got the headpiece and gloves already, and we can swap out to most of that since we're here. And that actually puts us above weight, so we're going to switch over to Backbreaker. And now our defenses are just through the roof. Like, that adds 5 defense and 3 poise. This adds 6 defense and 2 poise. And the gloves are actually a downgrade when it comes to defenses, so we're going to switch those back real quick. The, the uh, leggings can be found a little bit later on in the game, so we're going to have to wait for those. But aside from that, we do get to kind of brush up on our defenses a little bit. So I'm very happy with that. <laughs> That's one of the funny little things about this game is occasionally when you're using heavy attacks, it'll actually enter a slowdown mode to kind of give you a better view of the kill. And when it triggers, it does kind of slow things down and give it a bit more impact, but it also sort of interrupts the game. So I'm still of two minds about whether that's a fun mechanic that adds to the game or just interferes with my play style. So I'm still judging that, still rather ambivalent. But as you can see, this next chamber has got that beacon that we're being drawn to. It's a big wide open space. So that's right. You guessed it. We've got a boss battle coming up. Walk slowly in, taking a look around. You got this weird vortex in the center. 
I'm looking like a crow god because of the griffin armor set. And this guy is up to some muckery with the torches up there. Or the braziers, I suppose. And as you can see, there's a whole line of them, which is a little bit of a hint as to what the challenge for this boss fight is. But in the end, it's basically unimportant since it's very difficult to fail the challenge on this guy, no matter what you do. And here we are facing Infiltrator, the largest of the Rogar Lords. He's got those three horrid limbs of his, odd number to be sure. And if you fight him properly, he's actually not too much of a threat. You just kite on in, trigger his combo there, and then back on out. As you can see, those leg plates are kind of armored, so you don't deal a whole lot of damage out of the box, but the interesting part about this boss fight is that ugh, I keep coming in just slightly too close when he's triggering his slam down. So there we go. You can actually knock the armor plating off of his limbs if you focus your attacks enough. I am going to heal before I come back in because he's been doing some good damage to me and I want to remain safe at all times. I don't want to have to start over from someplace. And there we have it. Knocking that little bit of armor off of it is going to mean that I do much, much more damage when attacking that limb. As you can see in that one attack I did as much as I'd done entirely previously. One of the other interesting gimmicks about this fight that kind of messes with magic users is if you get clu too close to the center with the very noxious rift that's opened up there, you actually start losing magic, which can be very uh, damaging if your playstyle is focused on those, or if you use them a lot for utility, which I do sort of, but not enough to need all my magic up 24 seven. This is the second stage of the boss fight, so he's getting a little bit of new moves. Oh. That's bad. He actually throws out these little fleshy landmines that can catch your feet and do nice damage to you. You can see a few of them over there. You can't actually attack them and destroy them, but you can also just draw him to another area of the boss chamber so that you don't have to deal with them. And while you do, just keep hacking away on that single leg that you've knocked the armor plate off, and you should be able to deal with him in fine style. As you can see, we're just about done. One last swing and his leg is down for the count. One of the coolest things is that it actually keeps the armor off once it goes into this cutscene. So I'm very happy with that. It's a really nice touch. And you just don't always see that sort of attention to detail. Usually when you kill a boss or are fighting a boss, uh, it's death animation is always the same no matter how you fought it. But this was a nice little nod to, yeah, no, you, you, you figured out the gimmick, you knocked its little plate off, and you get a reward for that, so. In exchange for that whole boss fight going down so quickly, we get the upgraded version of Urus, which is a very powerful uh, pole sword, which is the same weapon class as the, um, whatchamacallit, Lost Pike that we picked up earlier. It's not fantastic, but it is very powerful. Like, it gives you 63 damage if you're this far into strength, which we have. And the other thing about it is that using its heavy attack, you can lay down a pool of blood that will heal you for entering and staying within it. So you can actually get some very heavy heals out of this if you use it often enough. It's actually a very good way to keep yourself healthy if you didn't pick the uh, Solace path and don't have shelter. You can actually use Urus if you're building strength in order to lay down those blood pools and constantly heal yourself up. So very nice weapon. But here we are with Yetka. This is going to be where we turn in all of those ancient plates that we picked up, but we don't want to talk to her just yet. There's another ancient plate that we need that's going to be behind old Kruki over here. So let's Kruk see what he has to say. Give me a good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. Hilka, reward! Me, 
you, Cleric. A reward, you say? That's not something a I can get behind. For what? Go on. Cleric, Ruhar brings skull. Cleric, human skull. Ruhak reward. So, I give you human skulls and you give me what? what? need of you for human skulls? Make potion crack! Pain or it stop! Crack! Give crack shield! Crack room spell on shield! Crack real! Fifteen skull room! I'll do it. I'll see what I can find. Yes, that's right, everybody. For the low, low price of 15 of these human skulls and dealing with him shouting Kruk at you every time you're in the area, you can actually get a very powerful enchanted shield. You can also kill him right away for a less powerful version of the same shield, but I'm not going to bother with that since I'd actually like to complete his full quest line. Use this pillar to kill that ooh, buddy back there. Knock him aside so I can close the gap. And swing in with my heavy attack. One more knockdown, just because these spiders are the worst thing in the world. So any sort of advantage I can get while facing them is one I'm going to abuse heartily. Inside this chest, we've got a nice little conceit, which is like a modified speedum. Most of these staves are sorts of spears type weapons, spear quarter staff combos. And that's a little bit cool, but at the same time, none of it's really historically accurate, so you don't need to think about that too much. That encounter did take us really low, but we're gonna heal ourselves on up with this shelter. Basically taking the place of what Urus would be in a regular run where we didn't have access to the Solace Magic Tree. And over here we finally can pick up the griffin leggings as well as a spell point shard. So very valuable chest over here. And you may have noticed earlier that we picked up an ancient plate from this chamber. So we can now take all five of those over to Yetka for a very nice set of rewards. Like I said, you do have to deal with him shouting Kruach at you all the time, but it's a small price to pay for the rewards that he'll give you later on. I have to admit that was impressive. I'm pretty Lots great. Of training. Sure. And taking care of that guy for you was just easy peasy. I'm glad well we agree. Managed. Well, to the victor goes the spoils. So I'll take this as a souvenir. What are you going to do with all those stone tablets? You have way too many. Let me help you out. You know. That's very greedy of you, but your rewards are fantastic, so here you go. Pleasure doing business with you. Mm-hmm, sure. So long, and watch out for snakes. As you may notice, it doesn't actually show the attribute or spell point shard, but that's because the game can only display five bits of loot at a time, so rest assured those are safe and tucked away in our inventory. And now we can enter this little challenge portal that's holding a few chests for us, so pop right on in, open her up, and begin looting the place like there's no tomorrow. It gives you an empty bottle. I believe there's also a greatsword in here. Codex? Yes, Codex the greatsword. Some runes and some regular old shards to top it all off. Nothing too important, but very nice room nonetheless. We can take all those rewards on the road with us as we move to leave the portal and this Rogar realm behind, but there's going to be a few things that we need to do before we go, as well as listen to Kruach being shouted at us again. Right up here, we've got another one of those tyrants that I'm actually going to completely run around so that I can take down his heart first, which is being guarded by this archer up here, so... Taking him out, and you can roll through to destroy that little heart container, and now I'll face him on more equal ground. Wait for him to swing out and make himself vulnerable, and just swing in to crush him some. And once he's swung himself to death, you can come in for the killing blow. 
And I believe that's all there is down here. And by using this little lever here, you can make your way right back out to the panorama from earlier. But there's a bit of a change this time. Let's oh. see what's up with that. Quick, take him out of here. We've got a few human no. interlopers in here dealing He's with their wounded. What are you doing here? We saw this shining door while running from the Rogar, so we jumped in. Could there be anything worse? We can't get back now. And the captain? He'll never forgive us. We're trapped. Yes, yes, you really are, but you, you honestly escaped, escaped here? And came here? That sounds like a terrible and idea. How could we know where it would take us? That's a fair point, but, uh, yeah, you really can't you stay here. Leave. This is not well, a good place. We were on our way to the tower by the bridge, the one on the right. We thought we'd hide there, but there's a powerful demon guarding it. Well, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I am playing a little goody two-shoes, so it's kind of imperative for me to help these guys out. But something we're going to deal with first, I believe that Codex, where is it? Do I not have the stats for Codex? No, it needs 22 strength, so that's going to be something we're getting right up next. We have a nice selection of potions, and is there any other weapons that I want to be swapping in? Not presently, so we can just... Head on around the panorama and sort out their problem. Come right on around behind this guy and get that lovely backstab, or at least try. Sadly, I completely whiffed the entire combo, except for a single sloppy hit in the beginning there. However, that pillar has a great knockback, which sets him up perfectly for this execution backstab. Right here is a little bit of a weird encounter. This Hellhound, in addition to dealing great damage if it can knock you on your back, doesn't actually die when you kill it. Instead, it gets reduced to almost no health and runs off down below. You can actually chase it down and kill it down there, and it will draw you into an ambush where you have to fight several other Hellhounds and a Trapper as well. In exchange for all that, though, you get the reward of a defensive trinket. But since I'm pretty much going to be dedicated to the uh, weight trinket the entire time, I don't really have to bother with that. Wait for the Chimera to spend himself on other attacks. Oh, gets me in that horrible little grab attack, but I should be able to close the distance now for the kill shot. Very, very powerful sprinting attack. We've got to deal with this trapper once more. We get to dodge his attack and then come in for a really heavy wind-up with the setup leading into the next kill blow. And now we can head down and clear out the chamber that those guys were waiting for. I didn't start the preemptive attack early enough, so I now need to wait for him to move into a better position. I keep messing that up. So instead, we're just going to go for the backstab, which I know I can get without too much trouble. I'm going to shelter on up here while we're heading into the next chamber. And I'm going to clear out some of the nasties in here before we make our way back to the uh, set of guards from earlier, since we should very much like to help them out. Helping them out is going to give us a pair of rewards, though they're not necessarily all useful to us. There we go. Quick two blows there. The camera is stuck behind a sort of barrier right there, meaning we can ooh, we can come in and deal with him. Sadly, he did get a flame attack off on us, which is going to deal quite a bit of damage as we wait for it to tick down, but nothing a shelter can't take care of. As you can see, I'm just really in love with the claw finger. I think great axes are some of the best and most fun weapons to use in the entire game, so having a powerful uh, great axe at this point in the game is really nice, I must admit, but now that we killed that chimera down there, we can return to the guards and have them give our, us the reward, and in time they'll move down to that western antechamber that we just cleared out for them. So, run all the way over here, talk with them, chat them up, you and returned. they're happy with Did us. You clear the way? 
I did indeed. Yes. We won't forget this. You bet your butt you won't. It's not much, but it might come in handy. And for that, they give you a bit of experience and the Protector Dagger, which is an incredibly powerful agility weapon, if you happen to be running an agility character. But I'm not, so I just kind of get to hang on to it for uh, greed's sake. And believe me, I'm very good at greed in this game. I'm always a collectionist in games, so even if I can't necessarily use an item, I still am going to pick it up nine times out of ten. This Chimera dies quickly if I can get the proper setup, like I failed to last time. And these archers die very swiftly to just a heavy swing to their face. Oh, he lobs one of those firebombs at my feet, dealing a little bit of damage, but nothing to really worry about. And this is going to be where we end the episode. We made a lot of progress, killed a boss. We unlocked the crafting that we're going to be using a little bit more of now that we have the experience for it. And we've got some great new weapons to use. So join us next time and I'll see what we can be doing next time. Have a great day, everybody.